For decades, politicians in Washington, D.C. insisted that globalism and free trade would be good for us. Well, it turns out that globalism and free trade were good for the wealthy because they could pay someone in a foreign nation $1 an hour when they used to have to pay an American $20 an hour to do the same job. Globalism and free trade were also good for American consumers because they could go down to Walmart and pay 20 cents less for plastic crap made in China than for similar stuff made in the United States. But globalism and free trade have turned out to be an absolute disaster for hard-working middle-class Americans. Tens of millions of really good jobs have been sent overseas and they are simply not going to come back. This is causing many Americans to start asking this question. Has the American dream been outsourced? Well, yes, it has. Unemployment is shooting through the roof in the United States while U.S. corporations continue to send millions of jobs to places like China, India, Mexico and Brazil. Now it has come out that even several states with some of the highest unemployment rates are outsourcing their food stamp services to call centers in India. Michelle Brown, a 52-year-old underemployed woman living in Florida was absolutely livid when she found out that her questions about that state's food stamps program were being answered by a worker in India. That really put me over the edge, ABC News recently quoted Brown as saying. It's not right because we need the work here. People are in a bad way here. That truth is that Brown has every right to be upset. Why are states that have massive unemployment problems having calls about their food stamp programs answered by someone in India? But it is not just happening in Florida. ABC News is also reporting that this is also happening in West Virginia and in Tennessee among other places. Anything to save a buck, eh? The truth is that globalism and free trade have allowed the rich to get richer but have caused the poor to get poorer. After all, how can an American worker making $15 an hour compete with someone making $1.50 an hour in another country? It is getting harder and harder for hard-working Americans to make a living. The reality is that the once mighty American middle class is slowly being ground into the dirt. The politicians insist that we have now entered a recovery, whatever that is, but most Americans are not nearly so optimistic. According to one new survey, 88% of Americans believe that the U.S. economy is still in a recession. And it is. Unfortunately, things are only going to get worse. Meanwhile, the economic turmoil that we have experienced already is causing tremendous social chaos in many areas of the United States. Homelessness in rural and suburban America is severely straining shelters this winter as the economy continues to decline and as the official unemployment rate hovers near double digits. So is there any hope that all of this will turn around anytime soon? No. In fact, some of our major cities are seeing businesses close at an alarming pace. In California, one out of every seven businesses has already closed, and a whole bunch more are getting ready to close their doors. This is happening in America? Yes, this is happening in America. It would help if the financial powers would start opening their wallets and start putting Americans back to work, but that simply is not taking place. In fact, the latest numbers indicate that the majority of large corporations in the U.S. are hoarding cash and are hiring very few new workers. The Federal Reserve continues to tout a recovery and is predicting that unemployment will stay high for at least the next two years. But the American people don't have two years to wait. Families are hurting and people are losing their homes. Unfortunately, the American people are not going to get a bailout like Wall Street did. That Wall Street bailout was supposed to trickle down to the rest of us, but we all know how that goes. The truth is that the financial powers in the US and the political fat cats in Washington do not really care about the American people. The fact that the American dream is rapidly being outsourced means very little to them. Mostly what they care about is making even more money and holding on to their positions. So who is going to look out for the interests of the American people? That is a very good question. We have come to a time when you are going to have to look out for your own interests. Incredibly hard times are coming, so now is the time to make sure that you and your family are prepared for what is ahead. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. Wages haven't kept up with real inflation in 30 years. In the 80s we were working our tails off and have lost a few points every year. The compounded result has required low interest rates to offset. The kids think this is normal now. 
Recessionary cycles are used to clean up unproductive debt and zombies, making the system efficient and profitable. It was designed to bring back normal cycles. Reinforce domestic production and raise interest rates gradually. Value increases, bringing back investors. Can still happen, but the current administration has almost guaranteed a massive default somewhere. Our leaders know the world is about to go bankrupt, and a reset is inevitable. They hand out stimmy checks and increased unemployment benefits prior to the big event in order to make friends with their citizens by handing them breadcrumbs, which has accelerated the reset, as planned. When this all goes down suddenly, they can say we were trying to help everyone. This is a big accident, and we blame it on COVID. When you give citizens money across the nation it's designed to make it look like you're their benefactor who must through necessity, implement socialism immediately to save everyone. Fasten your seatbelts. Change is coming. One of the globalists' goal is to bankrupt the middle class and make them serfs. They are using different methods to achieve it. No matter where the money is aimed it will trickle up to the rich, then up to the wealthy. That's how things work. Pay wage slave, he pays landlord, who pays bank, mortgage, who pays rights, investors, etc. They are rich, wealthy because they earn gains on capital in addition to salary. The poor are just going to become poorer using bigger numbers. Funny how giving money to the poor is always a bad idea, while giving more to those who already have plenty always works out good for the economy. Financial engineering is elite's way of convincing the commoners that there is a policy in place to help them, when it's just another way to confiscate middle-class wealth to line elite pockets. The stimulus package won't cut poverty, it will accelerate it. It's an admission we have a very bad economic problems, and haven't done much of anything about it. As a consequence, poverty has become rampant in the US from the lack of preemptive actions. The US economy was tanking way before the COVID-19 ever came to these shores. Back in January of 2020, it was reported that 9,500 businesses went bankrupt and shut down then, but people have short memories about that. Current projections for doubling those business losses over this last year seems to be on track too. There is no resilience in the American economy either, so if there are any disruptions, like a pandemic, or other natural disaster, then the economy has difficulty in recovering, and people get hurt. The government practices a laissez-faire attitude, at the insistence of the capitalists, who don't want government involved, and did little to nothing about our economy that has gotten us to where we are at today. We had the very same situation back in 2007-2008 with the banks, but nothing ever got fixed then. Instead, the government was made to feel obliged to throw taxpayers' money at the banks to keep them solvent, remember Ben Bernanke's helicopter money, but stayed out of any planning to prevent a situation like this from ever happening again. There was a need to reinstitute the Glass-Steagall Act then, but they didn't do it. Consequently, the US economy has been bottom bouncing ever since, and you, as taxpayers, have been paying for it. The stimulus will accelerate poverty because it is a massive tax. Government spending is always a tax. The tax we are mainly paying is higher prices as a result of inflation to cover those trillions. And Trump and Biden and their congresses aren't only to blame. It is also Bush and Obama and their congresses and all the trillions they spent, including permanent expenditures, such as Medicare Part D and Obamacare. The only kind of stimulus that works is less or no taxes. All functions of government should be paid for through the few services they should provide. The dollar is the biggest debt-based experiment in history. Taxes are the government's way of mandating demand for the dollar domestically, while the exorbitant privilege, petrodollar mandate creates artificial demand for the dollar abroad. In either case, the dollar is based on purely extortion and implicit violence. The elites understand that this is a huge wealth transfer from the bottom to the top, and the stimmy checks and UBI they're going to throw the serfs as crumbs compared to the money they're taking for themselves. It's a huge wealth transfer to government employees who unlike the rest of us, will now be shielded from the consequences of government decisions. Government workers at the state and local levels, including teachers, have been getting ever-increasing portions of tax revenue. Most barely pay anything for their gold-plated health insurance or pension plans and retiree health care, while the total costs of these double every 5 to 10 years. This is why our roads and infrastructure are crumbling. 85% of all government federal, state, city, etc. is absolutely worthless and a cancer to the USA. The government only exists to take care of itself now, and is not we the people for the people. 
This is the exact opposite of what this country was founded on. Now the Federal Reserve banksters 100% of them are evil parasitic. 100% of them need to go as soon as possible before most of us are starving and living in misery. At this point in the game, the only investment that makes sense is investing in your ability to provide for yourself separately from the systems. Buy productive land that you can set up a small homestead with improvements that harvest rainwater, polytunnel, greenhouses, tools, and implements. Learn how to garden, plant berries, brambles, raise chickens and meat birds, set up a small solar battery bank, and hunt. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe, sane, and healthy friends.